Hey everyone, welcome back to another dividend investing video. Last fall, a little over six months ago, I started up a brand new dividend growth portfolio in order to generate some passive income, and we started from scratch with a Fidelity account. I created this portfolio as a way to demonstrate one method of building a dividend growth income stream that anyone can do themselves. I call it the dividend growth income portfolio. As the month of March wraps up, it's time to go over all of the activity in this account. I'll show you what I purchased, the dividend income I received, and much more. So let's get to it. I'm Nick, and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor or guru. I'm just a regular guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could, please do me a favor, smash the like button, and subscribe to keep up with future videos. This helps us out more than you can imagine with the algorithm so we can bring you more quality dividend investing content. Also guys, we're almost at that 15,000 subscriber mark. Hitting that would be huge. I never imagined I could find that many people who get excited enough about dividend investing and we're just getting started here. Much appreciated. So we're now six or seven months into having this dividend account starting from nothing. I just make weekly contributions. I don't put a huge amount of money in here but I've not missed a single week since I've started the account. When I made this account, I picked Wednesday as the day I would make all of my purchases. I'm often asked why Wednesday, and it's not really a particular reason other than I wanted to make regular consistent purchases without trying to time things and leave emotions out of the equation. So if you set a designated day, this is the day I'm going to buy in this account no matter what, consistently. That's my plan here, and that's what I have been doing. I'm looking at this with a decades long mindset. So it's all about building this up with slow, consistent contributions and not trying to time things necessarily. Now, starting from nothing and with these weekly, small weekly contributions, the account value is now nearly $7,500. In just a few short months, this is gonna be an account valued at five figures. So let's come into my spreadsheet. First, I'm gonna show you my contributions tab, see how I've been adding money in the account. I set my goal here of $10,000 added into the account for the year 2023, and that's not counting what I did in 2022. So far, I've added $4,250 in cash contributions for these first four months, and that's been doing $250 steady each and every week. To meet my goal of $10,000, a $200 per week contribution would get me there, so I'm currently on a path to smash my goals. We are now 33% of the way through 2023, the first four months. Uh, for one, if I could smash these goals, Let's do it, right? Second, let's say personal circumstances forced me to scale back like a temporary loss of income or something. Well, then I'm already ahead of the game, which gives me some slack if I need it. And altogether, between this year and the last few months of 2022, we've added $7,200 into this account. All right, let's move into my dashboard where I aim to sum up everything nicely. Show me all the important stuff in one place is the idea here. We have a market value for the fund at $7,441.49. The cost basis at $7,262.24. What that is, is the $7,200 in contributions we've added, plus the dividends and interest I've received reinvested back into the account. We've collected $60.52 in dividends since starting this account, and $47.71 of that in the last four months here in 2023. And this gives us an unrealized gain of $179.26 or a 2.47% price appreciation on our investments here. So we're up right now. From a dividend perspective, our fund is yielding 3.18% with the yield on cost of 3.26%. And the yield on cost is based off the yield of our cost basis, the initial in amount invested, right? And if we didn't add any more money or reinvest any of our dividends for the next year, we could expect this portfolio would give us $236.53 in dividends over the next year. And th that could be thought of as $19.71 per month or $4.55 per week. So in seven short months, I've been building this up and I could have it buy me a coffee at Starbucks once a week if I wanted to or something like that. So while this isn't super impressive yet, it's a snowball that is beginning to roll. Below, I have my goals set up. I am 64.8% of the way to my next goal, which is to have this account pay us a dollar per day. And that's $365 in forward annual income. That is my 2023 goal for this portfolio, and we should easily make it. We're definitely on track to do so. And the $100 a month goal is my 2024 goal. It's always nice to set goals when you're doing this, and realistic ones like these that step up. I think it's easier to build up to grander goals. Like my ultimate goal for this portfolio is to spit out $1,000 a month in dividend income, and that's going to be really nice. And I think that's going to take us about six to seven years 
to get there based on my estimates, but it's exciting to see this to start taking off. Okay, we're going to come back to this page shortly uh, for the dividend income part, uh, but first I want to go over the holdings in this account. Here is my sortable portfolio tab in my spreadsheet. It's sorted alphabetically here, but I made it so it could be sorted by anything we like. Now, the first way I like to look at things in my account is by weight. That shows us where we are heaviest. Now, the three positions that are heaviest are all ETFs, and that's the way I prefer things. It's about 27, 28% of the fund, right about where I want it. I actually wouldn't mind going a little heavier on all three of these, maybe bump that above the 30% mark. Now, for the first few months of the performance of VYM and SCHD, these were almost identical. And guys, I bought these in exactly equal amounts at the same time, aside from dividend investments. Each time, say I buy $50 of VYM, I've also bought $50 worth of SCHD. I buy them exactly at the same time. You can see we have the same amount of money invested in both within 50 cents, just shy of $700 each. Now, ever since the SCHD reconstitution in March, VYM has started to perform a little better for me and is now my heaviest position at 9.51% of the portfolio and SCHD is at 9.33% of the portfolio. And the S&P 500 ETF VOO is taking up 7.81%. I've been buying into that one a little bit each week so far this year. It's one of my lowest yielding funds, but it is the benchmark for any portfolio in my opinion and the standard that provides instant diversification and exposure to the top 500 companies in the U.S. and dividend growth. And part of the idea is that it will also help drive growth on the fund overall. Also, little known fact is the average rate of dividend growth for the S&P 500 is around 6%. Now, I have a video coming later this month where I'll show you my plan for SCHD and VOO long term because these are two funds that are both centerpieces in my own plan for financial freedom. Now, the other 24 positions here are dividend stocks. They're mostly dividend growth stocks with a few higher yield positions. Let's sort this by performance. Now, my top performing stock so far has been Mondelez International, oddly enough. They are coming off strong earnings and the stock is up nearly 10% over the last month. I wish it didn't come up this much because I'm still buying Mondelez and its valuation is now in hold territory in my opinion. But this is dollar cost averaging and I beef up these positions every month. These 24 stocks each received $30 of investments for the month of April in addition to their dividend reinvestments for a few of them. In VOO I added $80 to and SCHD and VYM I added $100 to. That's my purchases. So the other high performers here are Comcast and Broadcom. And look at Medtronic, now up 11.5%. I remember telling you guys when the stock was a buy a few months ago, back when it was in the 70s. It's definitely recovered. Also, Procter & Gamble and Snap-on are both up 10% as well. On the flip side of that, a few handful of these stocks are down, more up than down right now. Uh, the worst performing stock is AT&T. They had terrible earnings about a week or so ago. And it dropped like 11%. Walgreens is my second shittiest performer, down about 6%. percent at and Walgreens... These are both basically yield traps, and that's really what I get for chasing yield, right? I'm going to move over to Seeking Alpha now. I'm going to use their portfolio tracking features to show you some more stuff here. And I think most of this is for premium members being able to track your portfolio. So if you want to try this out, you can use a link in my description to take a seven-day free trial of Seeking Alpha's premium membership. And if you like it, you'd be able to keep it, and you'd only pay $99 for your first year of membership. And that comes out to just about $8 per month. I think that's a great value between the portfolio tracking feature here as well as access to all the great articles they have. To, again, to get that free trial and discounted membership, you do have to use the link in the description. Seeking Alpha only makes these available uh, to viewers who via that link. And this is a wonderful way to help support the work we do here on the channel. And Seeking Alpha, they provide this nifty way to see your portfolio and allows you to see it in so many different ways. We have about a dozen different tabs views here on the portfolio that we can use now the first one the summary it lets you see how your holdings did on the last trading day the 52 week range as well as analyst ratings and we can sort this to see which stocks wall street likes and which ones it doesn't now and then we have the holdings tab and here's where i can see my portfolio's performance i can sort things just like i do in my spreadsheet of course here i can click into the companies to see their details read their articles and so forth all right, so the after hours tab is not particularly interesting for me or for dividend investors, so I'll skip that. The ratings tab, though, is interesting. They always look at these with skepticism, right? What's nice is you can mouse over these headers and they explain what these scores and ratings are to you in plain English. You can also click a rating and see more. So if I want to see the valuation metrics for AT&T, I would just click into it and I can dig deeper here into the company if that's what I want to do. All right, here is the up 
and downgrade tabs that let you see if Wall Street or Seeking Alpha Analysts or Quant changed a rating on any of the stocks in your portfolio and you can click into the details if you like. And there's the earnings tab. This is really useful as you want to stay on top of the companies that you invest in. You can see their next earnings date, the estimates, and how things played out last time. That's pretty handy. Here is one of the better tabs is the dividends tab. This is nice. We can see all of our dividend grades based on safety, growth, yield, and consistency. Now these are sector relative and I take them with a grain of salt, but it's nice to have. We can track ex-dividend dates and payout dates to see what's coming, what's going to be paying us. We can see the yield both by the last 12 months and the forward yield, as well as the four-year average. And if you follow my stuff, you know I like to see yields that are better than their own average. I try not to chase yield, but I do like to lock in a better than average yield for a company relative to itself to get a good starting yield. And we have the valuation tab that shows us some valuation metrics. So you have your PE based on either the last 12 months or the forward PE, the PEG, the price to sales, price to book, and price to cash flow. There are several others here, I think, that gives you a good idea of how we can utilize Seeking Alpha to review our portfolios and keep up with the companies that we invest in. And we can scroll down and you know all the articles related to your holdings will show up here. And these can range from opinion pieces to earnings reports and dividend raises and news. It's really nice. And how this works is you just link your brokerage to Seeking Alpha. And as you make purchases and changes to your portfolio, they're brought into Seeking Alpha automatically. You don't have to update it. It's really, really nice. Also, you can track multiple portfolios this way. I bring in my 401k, my Roth IRA, and I have another dividend account that I started a few years back that I have as well. And I can track that all in here. So that was Seeking Alpha. Let's go back into the spreadsheet here. And I'll show you the dividend income we received in the month of April. I think we've not hit a point where we're always going to be bringing in at least $10 each month. With March, June, September, and December as my heaviest months. But this is real measurable progress if you compare April to last January. I more than doubled the dividends received. Let's see what we got. On April 3rd, I received $0.91 cents from Automatic Data Processing, ticker ADP. On April 13th, I received $2.06 from Best Buy, the electronics retailer, ticker BBY. On April 14th, I received $0.66 cents from Agri Realty, the REIT. This one pays each month, and it's cool to see this number climb each month as well. Also on the 14th, I received $1.14 from Mondelez International, our top performer. On the 18th, I collected $1.42 from Medtronic. On the 19th, I collected $1.13 from Main Street Capital, another monthly payer. Then on the 26th, I collected from two companies. Comcast paid me $1.59, and Cisco paid me $1.61. Altogether, I collected $10.52. And I also earned 37 cents in interest, which will just go into my next VOO investment. Let's switch tabs to look at the forward income and how that's mapped out for a year. That $236.53 portfolio pays out, as we mentioned, is very heavy in the months of March, June, September, and December. Now, May is going to be a slow month for dividend income. So some of my higher yielders like AT&T and Kinder Morgan are both set to pay me a few bucks each. Procter & Gamble also pays in May. Between these three and the monthly payers, I'm going to collect five dividend checks, and I expect it's come out to about nine or ten dollars. When June, however, is set to make a new record for the portfolio and dividend income, I'm anticipating about forty dollars that month. I welcome the extra injection of dividend income that's going to provide. Now back to the dashboard, you can see what we just looked at in graph form, and I have my dividend income displayed here. As far as my plans for May. More of the same, really. Purchases every Wednesday. There are five Wednesdays in May, so I think I'm going to be able to put a little extra towards ETFs this month. And maybe try to push that beyond 30% of the portfolio. That's, I think that's what I'd like to do. Wednesday is the day I invest in this account, but it's not the only day that I do invest. I also designate Monday, or the first day of the trading week, as my day to buy in my Roth IRA. And I do this by adding $125 each week into that account. And that's with Charles Schwab. And I buy a weekly share of SCHD every Monday. And then I end up buying some real estate investment trusts at the end of the month. So if you want to see the REIT I bought in April, then just click the link here. And that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around. Please leave your questions in the comments. And I'm going to try to address them in our next update. And until next time, keep investing.